Hello fellow earthlings and welcome to the witch's bathroom. Uh, wake up and make up. It is a butt crack of a fucking dawn early and no I don't have a five o'clock productivity routine. I just made the questionable decision to get poked by a frisky eggplant and now I am the proud owner of uh, two crotch goblins. Yay! Welcome to the circus. Anyways, today we're doing a day in the life of a witchy mom. C'est moi. So if you are considering multiplying or you want to teach your existing offspring a little bit more about your spirituality, your witchcraft practice, take them along, inspire them for their own life, this is the video for you. And even if not, stick around because this vlog is magic. I shall give you ideas from activities to books to songs, general bitchy parenting advice. So let's see, what is the plan for today? I shall go on an early morning walk as a little self-care mama moment, grab some fresh breakfast ingredients from a local farm, and I'm planning on airing out the crotch goblin and the loin fruit because the weather is supposed to be absolutely amazing. So we should have some fun in the sun, maybe go berry picking. Of course, there has to be some seasonal kids-friendly kitchen witchery that we can later on enjoy as a treat for a picnic. Now I shall finish up this and I shall meet you shortly outside. <sighs> Now, of course, mommy needs her magical chalice filled, not a euphemism, before she can pour in the sippy cups of her attractive offspring. So we're going for a solitary morning walk and meditation. Well, almost solitary, because the loin fruit, of course, is still very much attached to less chesticles. So she has to come along, but she is mostly playing wet noodle, sleeping all the time. So it kind of counts as solitary anyway. <laughs> and to all magical parents and caregivers out there, making time for some me time is so important. If you constantly have to manage someone else's life, think for everyone in your household or you know, keep it all together. It should be your number one priority to make sure you also get your share of good feels, me time, alone time, quiet time. Because yes, you can't pour from an empty cup or a chalice. Ladle from an empty cauldron. Uh. And another thing, life as a mom or as a parent in general can be high-wateringly mundane, boring at points, repetitive for sure. It's all about routines. It's all about doing the same things over and over and over again. So in order to give life a bit more spice and a bit more joy, it is super important to find the magic in the mundane there as well, or bring the magic into the mundane. So for me, even though I haven't slept much it was a very short interrupted night but I will get my ass out of bed at five just so I can see the sunrise and I can actually enjoy the beauty of nature have a moment of gratitude have a moment where I sit I journal I set my intentions I get inspired by what I can observe and if you haven't tried it out yet I challenge you to do it because it's the most amazing feeling if you had this gorgeous energizing morning not a soul out and then you come back home and the day is just starting but you already feel so fulfilled and happy and you already accomplished so much and of course I want to bring the magic into my family's life too so I'm going to surprise them today with a farm fresh breakfast fresh eggs and pasteurized milk some cheese some fresh bread so everyone has a fully awesome start into the day
the witchcraft community has adopted celebrating the holidays on the Wheel of Year, regardless if you're Wiccan or Pagan or just a secular witch. And I do so too. That's something that is really easy to do with kids, just to teach them a little bit more about the environment they live in, life cycles, the big treasure that we have in nature where we can draw from. And I don't know if it's only me or if I'm just crazy nostalgic, but with the modern times and everything being available all year round in the supermarkets, be it fruit or vegetable that you buy or basically just after Christmas they already put the chocolate Easter bunnies in the shelves or even stupid things like Netflix where I can now binge watch Bridgerton whenever I want. Back in my days we have to walk 15 kilometers through the snow to get to a TV to then wait for the correct date and time to watch our show. Oh, the good old times. <laughs> really, I'm a parent now, aren't I? Dreadful. And while that in many ways is uh, super convenient, it also kind of takes away the magic that some things are not available at all times, that they're very much tied to a season. Blackcurrant cream cake for me is the taste of summer. Or apple crumble absolutely awakens those autumn golden light feelings for me. If I have that all year round, it's not quite as special anymore. And people back in the days had to live quite seasonally. They had certain dishes attached to certain holidays. There's also beauty in waiting and looking forward to something. So in order to keep a little bit of that magic for my own kids, I do try to do as many seasonal activities as possible and also buy or pick ingredients as seasonal as possible. Again, teaches them much about nature, the environment, and also gives me a great intro to teaching them more about the old traditions and how we can apply them in our modern day life. How we can take certain messages from the holidays of the Wheel of Year and apply them in reflection, introspection, once they're older. Right now they just enjoy the conquer collecting or snowman building or strawberry eating. Oh yeah, I almost forgot where I was going with that. We are going berry picking now because uh, that's uh, in season and it's fun. So let's go. Sunday breakfast in bed. Strawberry jam on some bread. And if you feel like doing anything today, then go ahead. I just lay here instead. Cause I do the same for you, just like I'm supposed to do. I'm yours, you're mine. If you ever feeling blue, rest assured I've been there too. We just pick up where we left off, then we tow the line. That's fine. If you ever feeling blue, rest assured I've been there too. We just pick up where we left off, then we tow the line. That's fine. Oof. So we made it back from our berry picking adventure. It's a million and hell grease. I am melting. The kids went through their like third outfit change of the day uh, due to various stains, sweat and other bodily fluids being spilled. I don't know if you hear the melodious snoring in the background, but crotch goblin already passed out from the heat and I wish I could do the same. So we need a little bit of uh, inside time now to shelter from the sun. So I thought why not uh, make a snack because the life with kids it's 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 all about snacks. Speaking of which, and who am I kidding? Uh, my life is all about snacks too. To immediately use up our berry harvest, at least uh, that what uh, still landed in the basket and not in my son's mouth, I decided to make summer berry swirls. A, a semi healthy snack. I mean, not quite healthy, but for sure better than a sugared up board crap in a plastic. Yes, I am a bit of a crunchy mom. Swirls are super easy to make. They're always a winner with the kids and they can help because the dough is not super sticky. It's quite easy to do, and um, except for the jam cooking, which 
is a bit of a hazard with very little kids because it gets extremely hot. It is a fun little project. Now on that topic, when sharing something that you're self very passionate about with your kids, for example, I am a kitchen witch. I love to work my magic with cooking. So I do like to include my kids in that. And I think that's a great bonding moment. You can share your wisdom. You can share your ideas. You get their fresh eyes, fresh perspective on how to do things. So you also can get some input if you listen to your kids and treat them like tiny humans with their own wisdom, point of views and interests. But of course, also we have to remain open-minded because they are their own person. They might not share our passions. So while we can offer them, we cannot be disappointed if they're not taken to the same type of spiritual beliefs, practices that we are. And that is okay too. So I do believe any flavor and practice of witchcraft can be shared with kiddos. Well, you know, the appropriate ones. Personally, when I talk to my kids, I never tie lid witchcraft, partly also because that term is heavily stigmatized so I don't want them to run around kindergarten and be like I'm a witch but rather have them know the tools the knowledge the activities that they can do to bring a bit of magic into their own lives for example to cook with healing or loving intentions also cooking in general is an invaluable skill as so many other skills related to witchcraft practice uh, as so many things in life baking and parenting is uh, not about perfection it is about giving your best and showing the process and hoping for a fortunate outcome so uh yeah these turned out a bit wonky but man did they taste delicious one of the most common questions that i probably get from other witchy parents over on instagram is what witchy books i read to my kids now my kids are freshly hatched and only three years old so the books i'm reading right now are not that elaborate yet there are witchy themed books for younger readers for sure i've seen them in the bookstores but i'm not necessarily a fan of them also because i'm not necessarily a fan of witchy books for adults. But anyways, there are a couple of genres that I do recommend if you are raising little witchlings. One thing we always have with us when we go out is a foraging guide. And that is the same foraging guide that my dad had out when we went on walks with him and I was a wee little witch. Just makes for a really fun activity to teach them young about certain herbs, about plants that grow in your area. Da wachsen Pflaumen. His favorite fruit, the bromberry. Apparently growing on our plum tree. So we do still have a little bit of uh, nature teaching ahead of us, as you can tell. Yeah, because it's also a very valuable skill, just in case zombie apocalypse happens and they need to fend for themselves and survive on foraged goods. No, but for real, you can teach them how to use things medicinally. Maybe even a little bit of folklore there, a little bit of sympathetic magic, or what that means, or how that developed. A bit of your witchy wisdom, so to say. Oh, what can we with Spitzwegerich machen? Who's this up? We got me. Who's this up? Where the cup fit too? The Amade is used, stimmt's? It teaches a fondness and a respect for nature. If they learn a plant is not just a green thing that grows on the ground, but it actually has like a function, we can actually benefit from it, we can use it. Plus also, if you're up close and personal with something, if you know something's name, it will be much harder to mindlessly be willing to destroy that. So a little bit of environmentalism, a little bit of respect for Mother Earth. Mit dem Baum verkämpfen. Mit dem Baum kämpfen. Ui, der arme Baum. So much for respect for nature. That's also one of the reasons that we do read a lot of nature themed books that teach about the different seasons, about the activity during the seasons. It's a wonderful way to structure the year. I can also teach the little ones about the holidays on the Wheel of Year, where they came from, their pagan origins, their meaning for our life, for our modern life today. Any type of fantasy book about fantasy creature, I really love the old story tale collections, for example, of the Brother Grimm's. While they're a lot of fun to read, they also have a deeper message usually hidden in them or a deeper knowledge hidden in them. They're filled with folklore, pagan, ancient beliefs of a certain an area with how the people thought the world worked, the universe worked and it's wonderful to read those fun stories but then also teach your kids why they were written that way. Ich komm gleich mit. Oh, wenn du dein Netz holst, kannst du Schmetterlinge fangen. This is so not gonna go well, but uh, it buys me time, so. <laughs> the next catastrophe. And of course, I would love 
for my kids to believe in magic with a K in their own abilities to do anything they want to achieve and that they know the sky is the limit so we also do read inspiring stories about real life people and what they have maybe invented or what they did with their lives or how they overcome struggles and that's all the magic we read the rest of the day we will just enjoy the garden do a little bit of cloud gazing also great activity to awaken that fantasy that open mind try to find different shapes in the clouds mommy can of course do a little bit of sky or clouds crying and the little ones can just make up their stories let their brains run wild their imagination and in the meantime do a wholesome nature connected activity that gives you a lot of vitamin d happy feels in the sun mm -hmm. 